What I'm aiming to do with this shot when I'm framing it is get the extractor fan to look like a top hat. I'm like a sci-fi is in Bard Kingdom Bruno. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Bearded Man Does Things. Uh, this video, we've got five things you can do on a weekend in September. Uh, don't let me limit you. You can do it on weekdays too. Uh, that will enable you to start up being more self-sufficient. So you don't have to have done anything before. You don't really need any specialist equipment. There are things in this video that you can just start today, even if you just do one of them. You don't need acres of space to ever get started being more self-reliant and doing things for yourselves. Um, you can start really small uh, and build up um, and that's hopefully what this channel is going to be about. If you're not new to the game uh, there'll be little reminders in there as well so stick around um, and if you want to see or hear me expand on any of these things then just leave comments uh, below and uh, we'll see what we can do in the future. Uh, in the meantime Let's go on. Number one, sourdough starter. If you're in lockdown, it became very, very popular uh, to try your hand at making sourdough bread. Hopefully you kept it up. If you didn't, if you've now been neglecting the sourdough starter, uh, time to revisit it. If you've never made it before, time to give it a go. It's so simple, it takes about five minutes to set one of these up, um, and it's just literally mixing flour and water together and then removing some, adding some back in every subsequent day. Links below in the description of resources that I've used to get mine going. If you've already got a sourdough starter uh, that's been on the go for a while, like a wholemeal one, uh, try a different flour. Uh, now that they're more readily available, uh, you might be able to get a, a bag of rye flour. Try that and see what different flavor you get in your bread. It tends to be a little bit more tangy, a little bit more sour. And as we're coming into autumn um, and it's getting colder, Making a beautiful, dense, hearty uh, rye bread is something that's an absolute joy to have. Number two, foraging. Why wouldn't you go foraging? It's free food, free stuff. Just go to a local park, a local green space. If you're able to, yeah, go out to the country and check out hedgerows. The chances are you'll be able to find things at this time of year, like elderberries and blackberries and rose hips that allow you to not only eat certain ones of those, not the rose hips, rose hips aren't edible, but you can turn them into different products. Careful what you pick and what you eat. Always identify what it is uh, beforehand using either, there's great apps out there that use the camera to identify it, um, or there's the traditional book method as well. But go out and forage and get some stuff. Even if you don't know what you're gonna turn it into when you're picking it, do it anyway and then find out later. There'll always be something that you can do with it once you get it home. And don't worry about the quantities. Figure it out later. Just go out and do it. Just because it's fun. Oh, hello. Uh, we're at that part of the video where everything changes, like the backdrop um, and my shirt, um, to get your attention because you're about to click off. Uh, and I also have to ask if you are enjoying uh, this content, if it's interesting to you, if you'd like to see more of it, uh, please do like and subscribe um, in the usual place. Also, if you can't, don't worry about it. There's a lot of demands on our time this day and age, you know, don't let one little YouTube vlogger uh, put any pressure on you. Do what you want, ultimately. If I can encourage you to do one thing uh, out of this list of five, definitely go out and do the foraging at some point, um, because even if you don't find um, the berries and things that I've been talking about, you're still in a green space. And it's proven time and time again how beneficial that is for our like mental health uh, and our well-being. Um, and that's super, super important um, after the year we've all had, uh, but in general anyway. So yeah, go out and enjoy um, your parks, uh, your local green spaces, while, uh, while the leaves are still there because autumn's soon approaching and they'll soon fall off. Um, so yeah, go out, do some foraging and enjoy doing that. Um, I will let you get back to the video for number three. I won't spoil it for you. It's apples. Number three, apples. It is peak harvesting time and there'll be loads of these going around, a lot of windfalls out there. Check in with your neighbours, your friends, your colleagues, 
Check places like FreeCycle, sometimes they're on there, and people will be giving these away because there's so many of them. It's not just about your classic crumbles and your classic apple pies. You can turn these into all manner of different things. They dehydrate fantastically, and then you can eat those uh, through as a food source throughout, uh, throughout the winter as well. They preserve really well in different kind of sugary syrups, which are delicious. Turn them into apple cider vinegar. Uh, there's a link in the description below of um, how to do that and also then how to use that vinegar. It's not just about cooking, you can use it in your hair, apparently. Uh, never tried it, maybe I should do, I've got the beard. Number four, seeds. Strange time of year to be talking about seeds, not a lot of planting over autumn and winter, but this is more about getting ready for next year and next year's harvest. What we don't want to happen, and think back to the few weeks leading up to lockdown, everybody all of a sudden got really excited about gardening and growing their own um, because we knew we were gonna be stuck in our houses um, and stocks ran out. Online stores got overwhelmed by the demand. So you'd never want to find yourself in that position. So go buy new seed now if you can. But you might also be able to harvest some that you planted already. If things have gone to flower, leave them be. And when the little seed heads dry out, you can go and collect them. Word of caution on that check the seed packet that you bought this year. If it says F1 next to the name of the vegetable uh, that you grew, probably not worth collecting that seed for next year because genetically that plant isn't gonna be the same plant um, and it can also taste disgusting. Um, it could be prone to disease, not be very uh, abundant or healthy. So if you wanna experiment, go for it but word of caution on F1 seeds. The video linked in the description below actually goes into a little bit more detail of seed harvesting for you, uh, so you can get a good head start with that as well. For those of us who suffer from mental health issues, we're coming up into autumn and winter, and that can be a really difficult time to get through. It's dark, short days, wet, um, you can't really get outside as much, and so that takes its toll, um, certainly over a months and months. So having spring bulbs planted now, in January time, you'll start to see little green shoots emerge from bare soil, from barren land that didn't look like any life existed in it. And yet underneath the surface, this little plant has been growing. Um, and in January, uh, couple of weeks into January, you'll see these green spears just poke up uh, through the dirt. And it's a wonderful, life-affirming thing. It's a good reminder that things are changing, that time constantly moves on, and the circle of life continues. So do yourself a favor, get yourself some spring bulbs, get them planted this month, even if it's just on a balcony in some tubs and some pots, absolutely grand, they'll work fine for that but definitely do it. And then in January, you'll have a beautiful uh, kind of display that starts to emerge uh, from nothing. And that's a wonderful thing. Number five, soil. Without a doubt, the most important part of your garden is the dirt in which everything grows. Look after it. Make sure it's in the best possible condition for what you want to grow. And so if you've been growing veg this year and now you've been harvesting it, you might be getting bare patches. September is the perfect time to get some green manure sown. Green manures are plants that grow really quickly, that cover bare earth and take nutrients from the air, from the atmosphere and put them back where you want them, which is into the ground, into the soil itself. And then when it comes to a few weeks before planting next year, you can dig the plant into the ground and that will rot down and put even more nutrients back and also help the texture of your soil. So number five, soil, green manure. And there we go. Five self-sufficient steps we can all take any time in September. Give it a try. Uh, there's stuff in there that I hope you'll agree is very achievable for everybody, regardless of your experience, regardless of your situation. Uh, just give it a go. Start with one thing and see where it takes you, see where it leads. Uh, you'll be absolutely stunned at how doing one little thing can be a gateway into a whole new lifestyle. 
everybody starts somewhere and it's always small and it's always at the beginning because where else can you start? Biggest thing though, hardest thing to do is to start to integrate it into your daily and weekly routines. And that's what we can do in September and who knows where it leads. Hopefully that's given you a bit of inspiration to give it a go. I'm gonna let you get on with the day. It's been a long video. Supposed to be a quick five minute job. And then I got to a rambling, which will happen if, if you do subscribe and you do watch more of these videos. You, I, I can talk, like, I'm an introvert, weirdly. I, I am not a chatty person in real life. So I think, glad to have you along for this video. If this is us parting ways, it's been a pleasure. Have a lovely September. I've been bearded man does things. See you around.